Paving the Way podcast. Welcome to 5-Minute Mondays with your host, Medusa. Come listen to some fascinating stories, affirmations, wisdom, and even a few interviews of people that have paved the way and are paving the way in their journey of success. Listen to their timeline of adversities from traumas to triumph. And also listen to some guidance of life and even a few workshops of living your best life, digging deep and understanding the science of happiness, learning how to bounce back, the art of being present, seven reasons to be mindful, the power of gratitude, and so much more. Paving the Way Podcast with your host, Medusa. Hey, everybody. Hello. Welcome to 5-Minute Mondays Paving the Way Podcast with your host, Medusa, M-A-D-U-S-A, made in the USA, baby. Yes, proud of it. And I've traveled the world and my heart is in Japan. I love Japan. Been to the UK, been to Australia, been to Singapore, been, oh my gosh, been to Taiwan. Oh, you name it. Every country over in the UK. And amazing. So, how was your memorial week and weekend? Oh, you know, being married to a military man, Veterans Day, Memorials Day, you you name it. It's very emotional. And it was an amazing week. Uh, We honor and do a lot of things. My husband gave a great speech in... Nashville this weekend. Um, very, very proud of him. He's a great public speaker. Uh, he did a lot as a command sergeant major in the army, um, speeches and whatnot. So, and he's helped me on several, especially my hall of fame speech, uh, speech, speech. (laughs) Um, so Memorial weekend, uh, amazing. So I know a lot of people get kind of you know, they forget like what Veterans Day is for, Memorial Day, etc. And Memorial Day is a day of remembrance, of remembering the men and women that served this country that we lost. And uh, we are, uh, it's a day of remembering and to give honor to those. And of course, Veterans Day to are to the men and women that are serving. And uh, my husband of 30, 31 years, whoo, let me tell you, it wasn't easy, peeps, but I absolutely loved it. But it, it, it was, uh, we made it work. Uh, and uh, we definitely endured and loved a lot of it. So if you choose something in life and you enjoy it, and there's a lot of ups and downs, It's up to you as an individual to either work through them adversities and choose what you're going to do to make it better instead of, uh, you know, bad verbiage and being negative around people around you when they're trying to enjoy something. So uh, you saw a lot of that. Um, I've seen a lot of it in my own professions and it's very hard to be an upbeat person and enjoy something when other people around you are miserable. Um, the army, uh, it's kind of the same way, but I get it. Um, you know, my husband has seen a lot of deaths, a lot of his best friends. Um, it's hard to be upbeat. I, I get it. Um, I'm not saying it's any different in my profession because I've seen a lot of people die, um, of certain things. And, I I can say that this business has contributed to that. Um, However, um, some people have died in the midst of an act of pro wrestling or monster trucks. Absolutely. Uh, But then again, a lot of it was self-induced. So um, neither here or there. And I'm sure it happens in the military as well. Uh, So let's get back on track to why we are here. And uh, I love you, babe. That was to my husband. Um, this week, oh, first of all, last week folding in, let me tell you, I got so many texts from friends saying, oh my God, dude, holy shit. That was an amazing episode. And they found their week full of, uh, amazing feelings. 
and uh, change. So that made me feel so good. So good. Um, it's been a busy week, so I haven't even been on YouTube to read any responses yet. So I apologize. But I wanted to quick because I'm going to be gone this weekend as well. Um, and quick uh, record this and um, put it in the queue so it drops correctly, hopefully. Um, I have had a few issues of them not dropping for a day or two. So, um, yeah, so I'm just, this one seemed to be all right. Um, and so I'm very happy for that. So um, I am going to start this. This is lesson 18. Uh, and it's called, uh, you ever have like tons of crap, old people, <laughs> old people. I say old because I'm going to, I'm going to be 60 in less than a year. And, um, I have lots of paper. I keep everything. Um, the days of printing are almost over. I'm going to say in the next 10, 20 years, everything will be electronic. You won't even be able to have any paper to print, I guess. I don't know, maybe. Um, but, um, like all of those, uh, pamphlets that you get, those manuals that when you buy something, there's a manual on how to, I feel that those aren't going to be in there anymore. And you're just going to have to go straight to the internet to read how to put your shit together. You know, people use YouTube anyway, right? So, um, how many of you still have piles of papers, old, okay, I'm really, really dating myself, old faxes, but I found a lot of old faxes that are already like dissipated like they're i mean they're got you can't even read the ink anymore and um how many of you have a lot of those old um uh, pamphlets when you buy like a you know a, a lawnmower or a weed eater or you buy a stereo or you buy a new appliance and you get those little pamphlets of of um your book and how to and what to and all that good stuff, right? How many of you have tons and tons of receipts? How many of you have, you know, all of that stuff? Just crazy shit laying around like that. Piles and files and files. Me, and I want to get rid of it so bad. It's like I want to hire someone and just clean all this shit out. But this week is just for that, all right? So sit down, strap in, y'all. It's going to be good. Um, this is just, you know, pruning through the crap. Piles of paper, right? And uh, if this is your first time here, we are on lesson 18. You got 17 weeks to catch up. And I've been on a roll. Usually I'll do other podcasts in between, but I've been pretty steady on this. Uh, people have been loving it, so I think I'm going to keep to it. Now, all of this knowledge and stuff that I have is is uh, from other courses I've taken, um, notes. Uh, I'm a huge reader. Um, I'm a huge, um, I really do a lot of research. Uh, a lot of stuff is just my own. And so um, I love a lot of the knowledge that I do have comes from learning from other people and their point of view and their stuff. So this is from a lot of seminars and um, courses I've taken online. So I'm just going to say a lot of credit to all of that. Me putting it all together, putting it in my own words and boom, <laughs> there you go. So if this is your first time. Welcome. Welcome. Um, we are going to get a pruning, get that paper out of here and um, get rid of the clutter. This is about cleaning, man. This is about simplifying your life and I don't know about you, but I'm excited about that. So, um, uh, I'm here just to, you know, help you out. Um, I've got another year long course, um, after this one, but I'll probably take a break. Oh my God, guys, that one is so amazing. You're going to love it. Um, let me see if I can kind of give you an idea what that one is. This one here would be, um, let's see here if I can remember it. It is, no, 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 excuse me, I hiccuped up. So I'm going to go to, well, I'm trying to look it up because this other course I have is so freaking amazing. And I am going to go to, um, 
my files real quick okay so just bear with me my cursor is really fast and it's like I try to you know move it around and it's like I have three screens and it like goes all the way to the third one and it's like <laughs> I can't keep it in one area <laughs> Okay, so um, this new course is like, it's, it's, it's a year to, of writing to uncover your authentic self. Oh, let me tell you how intense that is. Holy crap. Amazing. So um, I think I might do that one live and do like a, um, this one is free. This whole year is free. But I might do this one and charge something um maybe we'll do uh it on twitch and i don't know i haven't thought about it yet but this next course is so freaking amazing so anyway we'll get back to where why we're here and uh we're gonna get rid of some papers so let's start off with instead of clearing the clutter and i know i i use the term unveiling the beauty i i get it but i don't know why this helps but it does just a more positive spin instead of clearing the clutter unveiling the beauty right okay so I thought that was interesting and that was a quote from somebody that you know said hey how about this so I, as you know if you've been following um, and again if this is your first time you've got 17 episodes to catch up and all we ask you to do is just get a journal notebook anything and just listen and then I'll have like a, a couple like a couple of um, practices to do and then I just ask you to write down some journal revealings could be one to five or maybe there's just one and there's no right or wrong and then you know you guys um, you can go to you my YouTube channel Medusa because it goes up there and discuss it and see what you think and feel and um, yeah or just do your own self work you know what I mean it's just fun and I'm just getting a lot of great reviews um the cutest one has been this 22 year old and she is just like I mean I love it I love it I love it we'll get into it later okay so um how many of you guys remember me saying that um I read or you can check her out on the YouTube and stuff the Marie Kondo's remember hers this like um, she's like this tidy woman. Oh my God. So there's a section in there, um, in the, uh, in the book called the life changing magic of tidying up, right. Um, on clearing paper and paperwork. And I mean, my eyes just kind of started to glaze over a little bit and I, I just, I felt overwhelmed and tired and, uh, I couldn't focus and, her suggestions for how to manage paper clutter were a freaking blur. And the only method that made sense was discarding everything. Like, just get rid of it. And you're like thinking, are you kidding me? I might need this. I might need that. And guys, I have receipts from 20 years ago still. Yeah, like why? Like, I need, I need to have a bonfire. Oh, hell yeah. And I don't know about you, how many are out there, but, you know, first do your diligence, find out how much you need to keep records for, how many years the IRS. I still keep mine up to seven years, but evidently I have mine up to 15 and 20. <laughs> like what the frick? No wonder I need a big ass house, right? So, um, and that needs to be simplified. Trust me. So, anywho, um, uh, so her, her suggestions on how to manage the clutter was like, so mind blowing. And, and then I, I, as she just disregard everything was the answer. And that was just too much for me to process in the moment. And I just, I, I became overwhelmed when I heard that when she just said, just get rid of it, just grab everything and get rid of it. And I'm like, wow, except of course the, you know, really hard, significant ones, of course. So yeah. Okay. So I don't know about you, but paper is one of the biggest challenges facing most of us, right? When I, when I 
kind of looked around and realized and um, friends and family, I was like crazy, like struck by how many people, how many of them put down paper as their number one being the biggest clutter challenges. If you were to see my office, there's just so much damn paper around here. It's ridiculous. I mean, I like cards and sending out thank you still, but I have so much shit, right? So this is really going to be great, guys. I know I mean, we're talking magazines. We're talking, I mean, I still have 50, maybe 25 boxes of envelopes. I don't mail shit. I mean, I do, but I don't you. I don't write. A, sit down, re, write a letter hardly anymore. And that's bad on my part. I do send cards though, and a lot of gift cards <laughs> inside the cards. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, yeah. So anyway, here's this. Paper is my biggest challenge, biggest clutter challenge. And my husband, he's very minimal when it comes to that. And he's a veteran. So, I mean, he's very structured, right? And uh, he even has too much. So I was resisting but I went past my thing initial thinking like this woman is crazy and the whole thing and I was stressing out and I kept reading and when I landed on the part where she talks about credit card statements warranties and appliance manuals I perked right up because this I could handle like and being told that I didn't have to keep any of it was a complete revelation and a relief. Like, why don't I have to keep any of this? I mean, were they warranties? I mean, where do I get all this? I mean, what if they fucked up and I still had a copy? That's how I think, right? Like, oh, but I got a copy. So if they don't, I still have backup. That's, but we can have a backup of the initial, take a picture, put it on a file, right? Get rid of it. Yeah. But again, I like to see it. It has to be in my hands. I'm a boomer. So I'm a Gen X boomer. I was born on the very last year of boomer right into the Gen X next year. Right? So I am like, uh, that edge. So very hard. Very, very, very hard. So um, I was like, oh, crap. So it was like, you mean I can ditch... The two years of credit card statements that I saved, and for who knows why or whatever. And then I was thinking, you mean I can toss out the all of my appliance warranties? I mean, those little yard, you know, those little cards that you get, and the yellow hard ones and that I never even filled out, and they're long expired? Hmm. And you mean I can throw out the manuals that integrate like the the have the illustrations on how to install my appliances in case I took them apart and I needed them just in case crazy radical right so guys they are going out yep I'm still putting it together and they are going out my credit card receipts statements direct to the shred basket is exactly where they went. All the warranties and all those yellowed manuals, all the appliances, and even the ones I have that I no longer own, I still had them, right? That shit's out, right? Into the recycling bin. So let me tell you, it was unbelievable to get rid of that, guys. And I mean, like clearing off my shelf, everything. I see everything. Oh my gosh crazy I mean it could talk it could take you half an hour and you're gonna be happy and that was just the beginning like it took me a half an hour and that was just one day but then maybe an hour and a half because I had to get to all of them and I have them all stacked in a closet oh it's just ridiculous whatever and then on the second day I was really inspired because I I I mean I then pulled out my beloved recipe box that I have. I've been saving. I have these two huge recipe boxes that are all written down in books and blah, blah, blah that I've had over, I'm going to say over 30 years. And the ones with the homemade tabs and 
the embossed thing with my name on it that my husband bought me one year. I mean, holy crap. I mean, I have over probably 500 recipes. I mean, I kept all the way. Like, just in case one day I was going to make my own, uh, you know, fucking, you know, own oil-induced sachet with orange tied to it something, you know? <laughs> ever, ever. <laughs> and I have all this stuff stashed in a corner, right? Oh, let me tell you. It, 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 there's a lot of rules involved. A lot of rules. And I told myself, a lot of this isn't going to happen. I had good intentions. I bought all this stuff. It just isn't going to happen, right? And the rule of one basically invites you to work with whatever you can handle in increments of one. Right? So one piece of paper, one pile, one area, one minute, one day, etc. And increase or decrease the task or time spent by one as time or energy allows. So the rule of one basically invites you to work whatever or however you handle in increments of one. Okay. So the recipe box is a tidy example. I chose the contents in one box to work with one sitting, right? So not the folders in my file cabinet or anything like that, which also need clearing. I mean, I have three file cabinets. God dang, that hasn't even been started yet, which also needs cleaning, you know, just cleaning, cleaning and clearing. So not the letters that still sit in my box in my closet. If the paper is a huge challenge for you and like it makes you feel like you're just going in, like you're having an anxiety attack, um, just that, that would be an indicator to simplify, right? So in my years of just starting to redo this and just months of doing this, I can tell you with absolute absoluteness that it's nearly impossible to make progress when you are heightened, when you are in a heightened state of alert, like overwhelm. Take your time. If you start feeling this stress, stop. Because you're getting there. You're doing little by little by little by little. You're going to do it. I promise. But, or instead, I might suggest a more spacious way to clear and reach out the simpler, right? Reduce and repeat, right? So approach to tending instead. So when you, when you are already in the red zone of overwhelm, it's much easier to reduce the task and repeat it. Address an issue or an era, area of clutter that doesn't carry so much emotional charge. That's a good way to start. Maybe it's your magazine collection or stamp collection, refrigerator shit that you put all over, or your shoes. Anything that won't send you into spasms or fight or flight. And by all means, adopt the condos method of clearing by category versus by room. It's brilliant. Go by category. I, I promise it, it'll be a lot easier. Trust me. I'm the, I have so much shit. I get overwhelmed. I'm in one area for almost two hours. That's how much shit I have had and still have. Like I still have to do this in so many levels. And remember in the end, it's not about the paper. It's working on how you relate to the paper by softening your resistance to it. That leads to magic revealings and lasting change. Really, I promise. And over time, I can almost guarantee that you'll find yourself in front of the mounds of paper with more energy. And vigor to address them effectively in no time. And if all you, and if you can handle, I mean, if all you can handle is a single paper clip or just one minute the rule of one is a mighty place to start. I am not kidding, guys. You've got to try this. It is invigorating. It is masterful and amazing. I cannot tell you. Check out Marie Kondo's book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. Holy mother, holy mother, 
Holy. <laughs> All right. So for my journals, people, hello, we're already getting into the practice. All right. So practice week 18. Do you have paper or does paper have you? Let me tell you, paper has me. So use this week to release some paper clutter by following the rule of one. One piece, one pile, one area, one sitting, whatever you can handle, right? Reduce and repeat the task until the job is done. Until it's complete, guys. Just one week, one place, one time, the rule of one. Just go back, listen, read, whatever, right? Remember, if you feel like you're going crazy, overwhelmed, you're doing too much. Just, yo, dial it back, baby. Dial it back until it does not elicit the stress response. If paper is too much to handle right now, choose an area of clutter that you can address. Bottom line, slow down. You move too fast. You da 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 Right? Okay, so slow down and simplify, baby. Slow down and simplify. That's a t-shirt right there. Anyway, journal. Now, that's your practice, your journal. Time to write, peeps. Okay, number one, paper or papers, whatever, that you are ready to pull out and work with and what it feels like when you do. All right, papers that I'm ready to pull out and work with and what it feels like when you do. Woo, cleansing, baby. Second one, what helps me manage my time? What helps me manage my time is, all right, and your third one, when I set clear boundaries for myself and work with just one thing, you know, pile, area, whatever, what do you notice when you set clear boundaries and work with just one area? Rule of one, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. What do you notice? Yeah! Get rid of those piles of paper, baby. That's right. You're going to need papers because some of you have a little business. And you know what to keep and what not to keep. It's all that crap that's been piling up that you've been looking at for 50 years. It's time to get rid of that right? Oh, but I might need that. I feel you. I get it. Oh, oh boy. All I can do is you will know what you got to keep, what you're going to use, what you're not, if business, what not. And I can't wait to hear uh, everybody's response. So make sure you check us out on the YouTube. Uh, make sure you check me out on all my, uh, e well, social media. And it's on Medusa, Medusa underscore rocks, Medusa rocks, Medusa, M-A-D-U-S-A on everything. But make sure you check out our YouTube and um, we'd love to hear what you have to say on that. All right, guys, until then, have an amazing, amazing week and um, have fun. All right. All right. See y'all. Bye.